Hi, dear friends. Hope you're having a great time. Today, we're back with CHRS data. In this tutorial, I'll show you how to use the CHRS data portal and explore its features step by step. Before that, if you haven't subscribed and liked the video yet, please do me a favor and hit that subscribe and like button. You can even join the membership or super like for more support. Thank you so much. Now let's jump in. All right. At the first step, I searched for CHRS data portal. Then I enter its official website. I'll attach the website link in the description. And you'll face such a page with a view of the globe and various parameters and options. If you can see, at the top of the map, there is an option named Map Layers. By clicking on it, you can see the categorized layers such as major river, country, watershed, and so on. By clicking on it, that layer will be activated and displayed on the map. On the left, various datasets are available, with complete information provided for each. This information includes the dataset's time range, geographical coverage, data accuracy, and so on. And below that, there is an HTTP download that has provided download link for hourly, daily, monthly, and yearly data. It's all the same for other datasets. Some explanation and information, and then download links. If you notice, there are a few options under the map. Those options visualize the specified data on the map. For example, we can change the data set or set the time step to yearly, then determine the domain to visualize the data in the specified range. You can even add your shapefile too. Here I set it to country. As soon as I set the domain, the boundaries of all countries are displayed. If you set it to other options, the boundaries of the specified domain will appear. Alright, now I have to choose a country. Let's go with the United States. When I select it, the country's boundary is displayed in a different color, which means that it was selected. Below the specified items, there is a visualization tab that contains date time. In the date time, we should choose a year. I go with the latest one, which is 2023, and finally click the visualize option next to that. As you can see, it was displayed on the map. Now you can change the data sets and see their results as well. Also, you can enable the legend for the output. Move it somewhere else or even customize the legend the way you want. Great! Now let's go to the download and see what we can download. Alright, here we should select the date time. It allows us to choose a specific time range. Next to that, we should set the format which I set it to TIFF because it's a well-known format and set the compression to zip. Then hit the download option at the end. Well, it requires an email address to send the download link, so let me add an email. Then hit the download. Okay, it created a download link. If I click on that, the download begins. And here we go, the data set's been downloaded. Let me unzip the file to see what we get. Alright, we have the datasets from 2015 to 2023, but interestingly, even the shapefile for the United States is included in the folder. And in the info file, we have brief info about the datasets, such as columns, rows, cell size, and so on. It will surely be helpful later on. We can add this dataset to QGIS as well. Let me go to QGIS to import these datasets. I just drag and drop them. And here we go. It was imported successfully. Now let's make the visualization better by changing the symbology. I double click on the gradient color here to directly reach the symbology. All right, I set the render type to plat it. Then choose a color ramp. Hit the classify, apply and OK. I repeat the same steps for the other one too. 
All right, the upper layer is 2015 and the lower one is 2023. Now, if I turn the layers on and off, you can see the difference between the two and see what changes have occurred during those years. By adding a base map, you can clearly see the changes and interpret them better. Let's go back to the website. We're not completely through with that. Okay, next to the download tab, there's a comparison tab. Here we can compare data sets by selecting the desired data set. For example, I select the date time and from comparison data set, I select all, then hit the compare. It gives a report of all the data sets. Now you can compare them. Here a download link for vector files for the United States is also provided. I click to download it. Comprehensive and useful information for comparison is displayed. If I scroll down, you can see the output of each one. And each data set can be downloaded and used. Also, the relative difference between the data sets has been provided, which helps you more. Even the land cover and elevation within the US are shown as well, to give you a better understanding of the area. All right, the vector files have been downloaded. After unzipping, all vector files can be viewed and used. As mentioned at the beginning of the video, in the visualization, the precipitation data can be displayed daily or even hourly. If you set it to hourly, in the daytime, the month field is added, which you should determine that too. As you can see, this is the three hour precipitation data for the US. You can also change the website's base map for a better visualization. Now you can change the fields the way you want and download the data you're looking for. That's it for today, guys. I hope you found it helpful. To support us, I want you to subscribe to the channel and hit that like button. Also, I will read your comments so you can ask your questions or give us tons of motivation to create more useful stuff. Alright, the same as always, until next one, stay safe.